Uh, first of all, I thought it was a fantastic game by the uh, young men. They really played their heart out. I'm so excited about uh, the student body and the community, uh, Syracuse, and the support they gave us in the Dome. They were loud. They were crazy, and there's no doubt that that 12th man atmosphere really helped what we were trying to do. When you, when you talk about uh, those championship teams that were standing out there, I don't know if that was the second or third quarter, those guys, what was those three years in a row of winning championship and, and the support those guys gave, excuse me for popping my pee, I'm going to get in trouble for that twice, but the support that they gave us and, and having some uh, individual conversations with the young men during the week to get them fired up, I thought it was a fantastic family win. Uh, orange orange cues from uh, the past and the present and hopefully the future with the recruits that were in the house that's going to really take this uh, program and take this university to greater heights. It's just one game. Let's not get overboard. We're 1-0 in the ACC and all that does is gives us a chance. Questions for Coach? For the, for the first two years, and even the Western Michigan game, when, when you guys lost Eric, things usually didn't go too well. Um, I think this is the, just from my perspective, the best the team has responded without him that I've seen under you. You know, what, what about that was different today? You know, what did you see from your team when Eric wasn't able to play? You know, I just thought that the other elements were playing really, really well. It's not like uh, we had to have whoever came in the game to be outstanding or be Eric Dungey too. I just thought that if they came in and, and managed the game, that we would have a chance. It doesn't mean we're going to win, but it, we would have a chance. But uh, the way the defense was playing, the way the special teams was playing, and, and, and the offensive line, there wasn't a lot of room in the first. There wasn't a lot of room in the second. And I'm not sure there was a lot of room in the third. But in the fourth quarter, the dam started to break a little bit. And that was exciting to see those guys pushing people around out there playing old-fashioned football. Did it feel different I'm, I'm not sure. I was so and I'm, I'm so locked into the game. I, I can't tell you that. Matt and Mark. Do you know with the win against a historic program like Florida State on ESPN, you can bet thousands, maybe even millions of people across the country watching. What do you think that that does, if anything, in terms of recruiting and just putting? the team in the national spotlight? Well, I hope it helps in recruiting. And the first place that I hope it helps a lot is right here at home. I hope when you, you talk about the, the state of New York and, and New Jersey and Baltimore and Canada and the Northeast and, and the Midwest, I hope that people have their eyes open that, uh, you know, unless you're going to your dream school that you wanted to go to ever since you were a kid, you might want to check out Syracuse University. Uh, I don't, the football might be okay, but I can tell you right now, the, uh, the academic is, is outstanding, and it's, it's not a bad combination. Mark and then Nico. Dino, uh, back left. Hey, Mark. Hey, congratulations. Um, what can you tell us about why Eric was taken out, uh, where he is now, and if you have any idea when he might be back in the field? Uh, right now, he uh, the big thing is he just had blurred vision. I'm not sure. i got to go back and watch the tape. I don't know if it was a thumb or a finger. You know, when you're running the quarterback in, who knows? I mean, you get in some piles and, you know, things happen in piles. If you've ever played football, things happen. And, uh, you know, he just had a blurred vision. And you could see one or two plays uh, kind of looking at him like, you know, like, where's the ball going? You know, that looked kind of weird. And I'm like, come here, let me talk to you. And, you know, he just said, hey, I can fight through it, I can fight through it. But it, it wasn't that case. I'm not, you know, it's like a boxer getting thumbed in the eye or something like that. He just had some blurred vision in one in one eye, and that's not healthy to be out there in that atmosphere if you don't have all your faculties with you. So uh, just based off of that, we just decided to make a change. That was the only reason why we made a change, is because he had, he's had some vision. Nico, I'm inside. Mike, for Nico. Daniel Booth, NCC News. Um, your defense was fantastic this afternoon, holding FSU to one for 14 on third down. What do you attribute that defensive performance to, and were there any specific matchups you were trying to exploit? First of all, I think that Brian Ward and the defensive coaches did a fantastic job. When you look at, uh, I believe it was four sacks by the uh, defensive line, but you look at the hurries and go back and count the tape and watch how many times the quarterback actually hit the ground. 
And anytime you're taking a position like that and you're putting them on the ground that many times, you're going to have an opportunity to have some success. I was most proud about the way the D-line played. The linebackers got in there and did some things as well. Obviously, we had a turnover with the secondary, and, and, and for us to get that type of pressure, the DBs had to do a really, really nice job, not only covering people, but when they did decide to run the ball, they had to make some tackles, and I thought they did a nice job with that. Dino, when you look back at the, the, the goal-to-go situations in the first half, uh, was there a matchup that you saw on tape that made you want to run the ball more and, and, short, and shrink the field, or, or is that just a, a different approach that you want to take in that area of the field? You know, we would like to think that we can run the ball down there, and uh, it just goes to show you how talented Florida State is. And it wasn't easy. You know, it wasn't easy. Obviously, we weren't successful. Uh, if I'd have known that we were going to play the type of defense that we were playing, I might have kicked more field goals and not gone for it on fourth down. I had, I had no inkling that we were going to play that way. But based off the way our defense was playing, I'm like, you know what, if they continue to play with this, we need to get to nine because I'm not sure these guys are going to get more than seven. And sure enough, that's exactly what happened. So we were in a, we were in a race to try to get over seven points to see if we could have a chance to win this game. Nico and Steven. Coach, in your time here, is this fair to call this one of the most complete victories, all facets of the game? Is it the most complete game at Syracuse for you? I don't know about the most complete game, but when you talk about, you know, again, I will bring up, those guys are five stars and four stars guys. They're the top athletes in the country, and they're well coached. That's a good coaching staff over there. And to get a win like this, you know, you know we need to uh, enjoy it. And then we need to get back to work because we want to be consistent and not occasional.